Intelligence is the ability to recognize and connect patterns. Recognize patterns and connect those patterns. Because that's what we need to understand things. We work on patterns. When we recognize something on an image, we say, oh, this is a cat. When we listen to music, we say, oh, this is three-fourth time. When we see behavior, we say, oh, he's angry, but he doesn't want to show And that's understanding the pattern. Now, artificial intelligence can be used for all this, to detect patterns and connect them to form an understanding, to show it an image and see what's shown on that image, to show it a sound file and see, okay, what is being said? I mean, we're able to talk to our smartphones, and glory be, sometimes they even listen and do what we want. The wonderful Cassie Kozirkov, who's head of AI at Google at the moment, put it very simple. She said, essentially, AI is a thing labeler. You show it something, and it tells you what it is. And that's good. It can tell you the words in a sound file. It can tell you the name of a song. It can tell you, yes, there's a cat in that image. It can tell you the obstacles in front of your car. It just tells you what's there. The first discrimination when we talk about AI is between the strong and the weak AIs. And you know, strong AIs, uh, this is this idea of a human-like intelligence that can solve many problems, which is very versatile. On the other hand, weak AIs are specialized. They're proficient in one niche, Well, they can't transfer that knowledge to another domain. Well, a domain is a certain topic, a field of expertise. So if the AI is good in, let's say, image recognition, it's not necessarily good in steering your autonomous robot. Well, actually, there is no strong AI out there. There's something called GPD-3 from OpenAI, which is kind of versatile, but that's about it. The rest of the AIs is basically weak, specialized. And that means, no, there are no Terminators out there hungry for world domination uh, yet. And that's good, isn't it? So how do we actually tell people from machines? Well, we can use the Turing test. And that's a test devised by Alan Turing back in 1950. Yeah, that's 70 years ago that people were thinking about how to distinguish between computers and people. Now, the Turing test goes like this. You have a terminal where you can chat. And you have two partners which communicate with you by text messages. And one of the partners is a human and the other is a machine. And you chat and you ask them questions. You have a dialogue. And if you're not able to tell which of your partners is human and who is the machine, well, then the machine passed the Turing test because it exhibited intelligent behavior. And that's the part. It doesn't have to be intelligent. It just needs to appear intelligent. And somehow, that's true for us humans too. Now, isn't it? (laughs) 